Thank you. Committee on Parole is called back to order. The time is 11.19. Uh, present today on today's panel is Mr. Alvin Roche, uh, Mr. Pete Freeman. My name is Tony Marabella. I'll be acting as chair. Our remote location is Tangipo Parish Jail. Would the staff at Tangipo Parish please introduce themselves? Mr. Parlow, is there anyone there with you? Okay. You're on mute, but could you unmute? Do you have access to unmute your microphone? Can you hear me now? Yes, sir, I can. Uh, there's no one there with you. You're in that room alone? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Parlow, uh, first case is Mr. Bryant Parlow. Mr. Parlow, would you give us your full name and DOC number? My name is Bryant Parlow. The DOC number is 773-790. Mr. Parlow, let me explain our process to you. I'm going to read some information into the record, and then we're going to have a parole interview with you. At the appropriate time, we will allow the persons who wish to speak to have their say. Uh, present uh, here today is your mother, Ms. Latoya Parlow Druitt, uh, your aunt, Ms. Elizabeth uh, Ferrand. And uh, Precious Arlo is also here, but she is not uh, not going to speak. At the end of the hearing, we will have, a, we'll have an opportunity to say whatever it is you'd like to say to the board, uh, and then we'll vote. We understand our procedure. Yes, sir. Uh, this is the matter of Bryant Arlo, 773-790. Mr. Arlo's date of birth is December the 3rd, 1993. He's a first felony offender. He has a parole eligibility date of April 24th of 2023. It's not eligible for good time. He has a full term date of April 25th of 2024. He is currently serving a four year sentence on the charge of carnal knowledge of a juvenile. And he was sentenced on August the 29th of 1922, of 2022. Is that accurate, uh, Mr. Uh, Parlow? Yes, sir. Parlow, your case has been assigned to Mr. Pete Freeman. Uh, he will begin our interview process. Would you please answer any questions he might have? Yes, sir. Okay, Mr. Parlow, how old are you? 29. Okay, and how many years have you been in jail on this top, this charge? Uh, none, only been in here nine months. Total of nine months? Yes, sir. Didn't serve time anywhere else? Uh, no, sir. Uh, as he stated before, you have a full term date of 424, uh, which is next year in April. Uh, tell me what happened, what, what went on, what, it was your stepsister? Uh, not, not really, but what happened was that we wound up talking to a mutual agreement and we had sex one time and I I just really feel bad about the whole situation and I believe that that was something I shouldn't have done in the situation because I'm the adult. Okay, uh, how old were you at the time? 27. And how old was the victim? 16. Okay. Um, looking at the community attitude, uh, the judge had no comment, the district attorney's opposed, the sheriff's opposed, the chief is opposed, uh, unopposed is your mother. Uh, to support your early release. Um, the victim uh, is unopposed. Uh, the mother was speaking, the, the other child did not uh, did not answer, but the uh, uh, victim's mother stated that she's unopposed. Okay. Um, so you're saying this only happened one time? Yes, sir. Did you realize what you were doing at the time was wrong and against the law? 
at that moment, I wasn't really in the right mind of thinking. But now that I have done it, I have repented. I prayed about it. And that's something I know I wouldn't do again because I don't want to be put in this situation again. And I don't want to go to hell. And I just pray that, you know, that everything be all right. I apologize to the family, you know, and I know that's what I what I did was wrong. And I really do truly apologize. And it's something I won't do it ever again. What uh what effect do you think this had on your victim? My life. Oh, uh her life. You know, and I do apologize to her also. I don't, I don't want no nothing to happen to her because of the situation. Uh, you know, people teasing her. I just really do apologize. So you realize how much you've affected her life? Yes, sir. I affected her life and I also affected my life too. And families' lives, because obviously these families were connected because you were spending what a week over there or had come to stay for a few days. A few days. Okay. Um you ever use any drugs? I smoke cigarettes. Cigarettes. You ever smoke marijuana? Yeah, in the past. Okay. How often you smoked it? Not frequently, but every so often. How, how often is every so often? Probably like a week, once a month. Every two weeks, once every two weeks. Okay. Uh, you ever received any treatment for the, any of that? Uh, not for uh, marijuana, but for my what happened. I had went to a, a counselor. You know, I tried to get help. You know, for the situation when I was when I bonded out two years, I just been trying to get help for myself. You know, that's the best I can do because I know that's not what I want to be in. You know, so you were in kind of a sex offender class. Uh, I I tried to get. I couldn't get that. So the best thing I could do is get a counselor to have somebody to talk to my situation to talk to. All right. Uh, I see on your rap sheet there's a child desertion charge. What is that about? Oh, that that was uh the one with my nephew one day. Uh he got out of the house and I was in prison and my sister was in prison and he went around the corner and the police was called. I told him for that. What did they do with that charge? You, you got convicted or not? No, I want to be in jail for, I think, three days and I got out. What what is gonna be your transition plan? Where are you gonna live? What you gonna do? Uh, I'm gonna live with my auntie. Uh, it's a good neighborhood, a thousand feet away from any schools. I'm, I plan on getting a job. She's gonna help me get a job, and I want to try to get my CDL license and just try to work from there. All I want to do is work and keep myself focused and work and trying to better my life and do right with my life. Okay. Uh, uh, Warden, have y'all had any problems with him? Is there still somebody in there with you or not? Uh, mm, no, they just left one. Have you had any write ups since you've been in there? Any trouble? No, sir. Uh, I have no further questions. Mr. Mr. Roche. Uh, Good morning. Good morning. You said you've been incarcerated for nine months. Is that correct? <clears throat> well, almost 10 months, but yeah. When you were arrested, and you were arrested uh, on April 24, 2020, is that correct? Yes, sir. 
Did you bond out? Yes, sir. I bonded out in three days. In three days. And you were incarcerated again until you got convicted? Yes, sir. During those two years, I have not got in trouble. Those the two years, I have got help. I was just looking because at, at sentencing, the judge gave me 856 days jail credit. And that's over two years of jail credit, but you did not serve 856 days. Am I correct? You didn't have credit for that treatment. Treatment. Okay. I bet that's what they did, but we can check it. Okay, that's good. Okay, okay. I understand that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, now we'll hear from your supporters. Let's hear from uh, your mother, Ms. Latoya Druitt. If you'll walk up to that uh, podium there, introduce yourself and tell us what you'd like us to know. Thank you, and I'd like to know that Brian has always been a child that, you know, trying to do the right thing, never been in any trouble with like the law or no trouble with going out of state. And I truly believe that he understands everything that he did was wrong, and I believe he's going to do what's right to get out. Know, and I'm going to definitely support him doing everything he needs to do. Thank you. Now we'll hear from uh, Miss Elizabeth Moran. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Moran and Brian called on the speech. As my sister stated, he has been a good child. He's been a good child. He's not going to get in trouble. But we all know that rehabilitation inside of any jail or prison is not the answer. So I don't know how that he is going to be by. Our strict ability is going to make sure that he does what he has to do without any questions being asked. And he can vouch for him. I'm in jail for another two, three years will not do him any good at all. And like I've said, we've all been seeing, we've all seen the, um, the outcome. When a person is, is steady, is in jail and without getting a chance to get He's a good child. If he stay locked up anymore, no telling what's going to happen to him by the time he gets out. And it just won't be fair to him to grant him another chance. He does realize that what he did is wrong. And I know he I know he is he feels sorry. He doesn't feel sorry. I'm just asking you, they really to give him another chance. Thank so, you very much, man. So you're going to be the new sheriff in town. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Harlow, is there anything you'd like to say uh, before the board votes? Yes, I would like to thank my family for my for their support in me. And I would like to please get a chance to redeem myself and to do better because I know this is not where I want to be. I have been through a lot. I've almost died. I have seen a lot. And to, enough for me to not want to be here. You know, all I could do is pray that I can do better and get a second chance to do better because that's all I want to do. I want to be a better person than what I am right now. And I stand on that. And I just pray that y'all see it too and just give me the opportunity to be able to prove that. You know, I just, I just really want to do all the things I want to do since I've been in here. I want to own land, I want to own a, a business, I want to get a house, a car, you know, and look back and be like, I'm glad I have made a, a change because I feel like God tests you and he puts you in certain situations for you to get better, you know, and I just really pray that y'all just give me an opportunity to show that. I love my family and I love y'all to death and I thank y'all for being there for me. I really do apologize to my family and the victim's family for what I did. And I know that's something I'll never do again in my life. I do it. I would do anything to put myself in the situation. Thank you, Mr. Paula. We appreciate your comments. Mr. Uh, Freeman, you ready to vote? Yes, I am. Uh, 
you know, Miss Paul, you got you got a tough life ahead of you. You're gonna be labeled as a sex offender for a while, and and that's tough. You know, uh, I used to supervise sex offenders, so I know how tough it is on them. So, uh, you know, when you get out there, you got to keep your head up, and you got to to really, really concentrate and follow all the rules. Yes. Okay. Uh, so my vote today is because I do want you under supervision for a while. And, and uh, so I am going to grant uh, and I want you to follow all of the conditions of the sex offender contract. Yes. Make sure you report when you get out. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Mr. Roche. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Paulo, my vote is the same for the same reasons. I'm going to add a condition that you have a curfew from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. Good luck. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Mr. Paulo, I agree with my colleagues. Uh, uh, my uh, vote would be to grant uh, and for you to follow all of the recommendations and the requirements of the sex offender contract and that you have a curfew from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. So you tell me, how do you feel about this? You know, I've been, uh, I think I mentioned this before. Um, I found Chris Hansen's uh, podcast, so I like binge watched all of it. And he he says that there are like three type of of uh, three buckets of offenders, and it's like there's the offender that might be like you know 20 years old and 16 years old. There's the uh, offender that. if the opportunity arrives, so they might be 40 and person is 16, they'll just like, or even 13 or whatever, they'll just take it because they're impulsive and whatever. And then there's the offender that is just absolutely obsessed. Um, and you'll find content on their phone and their, their, their hard drives. And that's is basically like their life's focus and desire is to um, and I don't know what bucket he falls into. Is it the bucket of, oh, the opportunity arose and he took it? He was 27 years old. She was 16. Uh, he said they weren't exactly stepsisters, kind of step step siblings. I mean, you know, it's like... I just remember when I was 27 years old, I wouldn't even like look at a 16 year old, right? Like it wouldn't even, it's just, th that's just me. I mean, it's just not something that would even cross your mind. It's like, you know, the, the age difference, even when you're younger, it's like, the even I say more more so when you're younger, like when you you're twenty. Think about when you're twenty one. Would you spend time with a sixteen year old? You're twenty one. Like you're hanging out with people that are closer to your age. Now you're twenty seven and sixteen. It's just. Uh, now I think it's very different than, than the other crimes. Like uh, you know, again, I don't think it's a. Uh, I don't think it's the same type of same type of uh, predator situations that we've seen, but you might have a different opinion. It's usually a red flag when someone shows up with a, a cross around their neck. Though we've we've only seen we've never seen good interviews uh, in these carnal knowledge cases when someone does that. If you've seen enough of of my hair of the of of these hearings, um, I think you probably know what I'm talking about. 
when I first saw the, I said, oh, no, this is going to be a bad one. They said, I think they couldn't get in touch with the actual victim, but the victim's mother wasn't opposed. That's just, ugh. That's so sad. I, how can how can the victim's mother not be opposed? I don't understand that. And also, I don't really understand is that he he got just a four year sentence and he's getting a parole hearing after nine months. I don't know, man. I, this these are especially you know the cases that I like to look at the comment section and see what the consensus is. It helps me form an opinion because I I just I don't know I I if I I'll tell you what here's the bottom line if a uh, if I had a friend or relative who I found out that a 26 year old did it was a 16 year old, I would be pissed and I would want to make sure that that person served every second of their prison sentence. So, I mean, now his other charge, I actually have the, the link for it in the uh that i'll put in the description that that i felt was less you know more just an immaturity thing but basically he he was 18 at the time and he was with his i think um his sister or his but they they were left to babysit their two-year-old brother or nephew i don't i, I can't the, the article, every time, it gives you like 10 seconds to read it and then a pop-up shows up. So that's the problem. Let me see. He was 18. No, so he was with Precious, who was 18. He was only 17 at the time. And they left their home on Monday thinking that the child was uh, who was two years old was in the home. But basically, one of them thought that the other was was in the house and the child was found walking around outside in the street by a police officer, a two year old, um, with a dirty diaper to boot. Um, and that was the reckless endangerment charge, which is interesting because here it says he was only 17 years old, but he still got uh, the charge, a $500 bond. Um, I don't know. I feel it. I feel when I was 17 years old, that could have easily happened to me if I was left with someone who was 18, uh, like uh, my sister, and I thought she was watching the, him. I would go to a friend's house. I mean, that could have easily ha happened to me so many times. So I don't know. You know, people do really dumb, immature, irresponsible things when you're 17, like thinking your sister's watching the kid. But for some reason, he got that charge. Um, Yeah, you tell me, but it's uh we can do we can go do another hearing. Let's see, um Kevin Kevin Jenkins. Let's see, um Richard did any research on Kevin Jenkins. I don't see Let's see in here. Let's see. Um, okay. Yeah, let's go. Let's go check it out. You recognize this deputy? We've seen him a lot. We have seen him a lot. Let's go. My name is Tony Marabella. I'll be acting as chair. 
Uh, we're at the remote location. Our remote location is Plaquemines Parish Detention Center with the staff at Plaquemines Parish Detention Center. Please introduce yourselves. Yes, sir. My name is Lieutenant Tinson at the Plaquemines Parish Detention Center. Thank you, Lieutenant. Uh, our first case is going to be Mr. Kevin Jenkins. Uh, Mr. Jenkins, would you give us your full name and, and uh, DOC number? Did he get him the honor? Very quick. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I okay, are you Mr. Uh, Kevin Jenkins? Yes, sir. Yes, I am. Mr. Jenkins, would you please uh, give us your full name and, and DOC number? Kevin Marcus Jenkins, DOC number 448950. Mr. Jenkins, uh, let me explain our procedure to, uh, to you. Uh, first, we're going to do a parole. In I'm going to read some information into the record, and then we're going to do a parole interview with you. At the appropriate time, those persons who've asked us have input will be allowed to speak. Uh, in opposition today is Mr. Randall Meyer, uh, Assistant District Attorney with the uh, Jefferson Parish District Attorney's Office. Also present is Robin Shifter, but uh, uh, will not be speaking. Uh, after uh, we have our interview process, uh, you'll have an opportunity to speak to the board, say whatever you'd like, and then we vote. You understand our process and procedure? Yes, I do. Uh, this is a matter of Kevin Jenkins, 448950, date of birth, October the 16th of 1985. He's a seventh class offender. Uh, he has a parole eligibility date of January the 16th of 2023, an adjusted good time date of May 22nd, 2024, and a full term date of December 1st of 2024. Uh, he is currently serving a two year, six month sentence on the charges of unauthorized entry of an inhabited dwelling, having been adjudicated a habitual offender, and simple escape. Uh, is all of that accurate, uh, Mr. Uh, Jenkins? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, your case has been assigned to Mr. Pete Freeman. Would you please answer any questions he may have? Okay, Mr. Jenkins. How old are you? 36. How old? 36. 36. Okay. How long have you be served on this charge? A year and two weeks, uh, most of the A year and two weeks, you yes, said? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, as he stated, you're a seventh felony apprentice, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, you went to court and you were found guilty at a trial and they put you on bond and they put you on electronic monitoring which you left the house and took off what was going on why why did you do that what was up what was going on in your mind okay um i was at work i was on a conservation on hip program and I, I was allowed to go to work and at that time me and my kids mama had misunderstanding for what was going on with the kids and I came I came over to her house because I, I thought it was an agreement that I could see my kids and when I got there it was it wasn't it wasn't agreed upon me seeing my kids and I had a mental breakdown sir and I just I was overwhelmed angry upset and I punched the glass and I I broke my, uh the glass broke and Accidentally, and on, upon me leaving, going to the hospital, I cut the ankle monitor off because it was so tight up on my leg. Where I needed some pressure, I needed relief because I was going out. I was, I was going in and out. I lost a lot of loss of blood due to, due to my injury from my own from breaking the glass. How many kids do you have with Miss Shifter? I have one. Okay. Do y'all still uh, remain in contact? For my kid, yes. Yeah. Have you spoken to her while you've been in jail? On the visitation, on the visitation of wise for my, our newborn that we have. Yeah. 
Wait, she's visited you while you've been in jail? No, they have they have video visit. Okay. They have a video visit, so they allow us to see our kids while we're in jail. Okay. Uh, did you know they had a restraining order against you and you wanted to go to our house? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, I did. Yeah, but, but you got let your emotions get the best of you and you win anyway. Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, you know, you look at your adult, uh, adult record, you've been revoked two times. As I said, you're a seventh offender. Um, I mean, what 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 is going on in your life? What has caused all this criminal activity? Are you, are you on drugs and alcohol or anything like that? No, sir. At the time, I was spending like I was blaming myself, fighting fighting myself over anger issues of the way I was brought up, you know, and um things that I believed that was right wasn't right according to the law and the rules. And now that I understood what was going on, when, well, when I when I actually understood what was going on, the problems that I caused was, was nothing I could really kind of do about it. You know, when I placed myself in these situations that caused me to come to jail, like, there was nothing I could do about it. it I, I had to either take it or Take it or, or, or lose, lose my freedom for the rest of my life, and that was something I didn't want to do. So, so now that I understand that what's going on now, I have it all that's behind me now. So I know what to do now as a man because I've grown. Okay. Uh, you have seven violent offenses, which is, which is concerning uh, to have that many violent offenses. Uh, you have two children. Do you do you speak with your children? Do you communicate with them? Yes, I do. With both of them? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, looking at the community attitude, uh, Mr. Myers is here. Opposed is the sheriff. Unopposed is your brother. Uh, unopposed is uh, Miss Shifter. Uh, the victim in one of the instant offenses. Um, where do you plan on working? What do you plan on doing when you get out? Living and working. Well, I plan on living with my uh, sister's mama in the east. Where we have a family, uh, family residence. And um, I plan on going back to uh, my previous job where I was a manager at Taco Bell. And met around by the You think they'll have that job open for you? Yes, sir. I conversed with them on regularly, and they say I had I still have my uh, position back prior to me getting up. Have you had any write-ups since you've been in prison? No, sir. Uh, any staff still in the room or they, they walked out? Yeah, everybody else in the meeting. Just you. Okay. The classes you've uh, you took a lot of classes during previous incarceration. You haven't taken any this time. Yes, sir. I did take one. I took uh, Malachi Dad uh, completed it. Okay, when did, when did you complete Malachi Dash? Um, I want to say April 3rd. That was the completion date. Okay, so that's going to give you more time off of your your sentence. They offer the other classes that? Yeah, they offer them, but they haven't, they haven't came with the next cycle yet. I got my leave the next cycle, they'll have more classes of offer for me. Okay, you have a high risk, a low need. Uh, that's all the questions I have. I have a recommendation. Sure. Uh, now let's hear from uh, Mr. Randy Meyer, Assistant DA from Jefferson Parish. Uh, 
Mr. So, good morning, Stu. Randy Meyer, Assistant DA Jefferson Parish. Um, we're opposed to Mr. Jenkins' request at this time. You know, that he's got that high risk assessment, which is something I very rarely see. That's something that concerns me greatly. Um, the uh, uh, sentencing judge recommended that he participate in self help programs as well, including substance abuse and a work release program. Uh, he hadn't had any substance abuse training. And I think he needs, uh, it's pretty clear, he needs more anger management. Um, I, know, I mean, he had Steve Hall back in 2018, but that was uh, prior to this offense. Um, and uh, the uh, he's had some anger management in the past as well. But, you know, this offense, again, was dealing with anger. Um, uh, there was a protective order that was in place at the time he committed this offense. Uh, and, and, you know, clearly he needs some help. Uh, you know, I, I hate for him to get out without the help that he needs because he'll be right back in here with us. So for that reason, we are opposed to his request. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mike. And when, uh, Mr. Uh, Jenkins, is there anything you'd like to say to the board before the board votes? Well, I mean, I've done I've done the best I could. You know, I'm pro I'm pro person me being the person I was before. So, you know, whatever your pro is, I'm happy for us. You know, I'm cool with it. I appreciate y'all guys. Big appreciate everybody who did. Thank you very much. Uh, panel ready to vote? Yes. Yes. Freeman? Okay, Mr. Jenkins. Uh, as I stated, your good time date was 5-22-24. It's going to be sooner than that, now that you completed that class. Uh, I agree with Mr. Myers. I think you need to retake Cage your age, and I think you need to take victim awareness. We're going to make that suggestion to the jail to allow you to take those charges, which is going to move the good time date up even further. Uh, by the time it's all said and done, you'll probably get out around your parole date if you go to those classes and complete them. But at the present time, I don't think you're ready, and my vote is to deny. Thank you, Mr. Green. Mr. Roche? Mr. Chairman, my vote is the same. My vote, likewise, is the same. Uh, Mr. Jenkins, uh, you've got a little more work to do, so good luck to you, sir. Okay. Thank you. I really don't have anything to add here. Uh, I think we can just jump to the next one. I, Lamar, um, I don't, I don't think I have any information on Lamar either. But it's it's at the same jail. So, you know, Randy Meyer. I gotta tell you, he shows up to everything in his district, and it is. Uh, it is pretty fascinating. I, I wonder I wonder how he manages it. I do have some research on Lamar here. I wonder if it's the same, but let's see. We can go through it if it is the same. We can skip ahead. And Randy is here, it's his district. The Committee on Parole is called back to order, but time is 11.54. Uh, our next case is Mr. Lamar Revader. Mr. Revader, would you please uh, give us your full name and DOC number? John, there are some people that would like to speak on Mr. Revader's behalf after y'all speak with him. Major William is the director of um re-entry and deputy page which is the um teacher for um thank you for change okay a deputy uh, with the deputy's last name page p-a-g-i-e okay i'm page williams you have to page okay yes sir one minute
Yes, sir. Mr. Ravader? Yes, sir. How you doing? I'm doing very well, sir. Please give us your full name and DOC number. Lamar Ravader, 426672. Thank you, Mr. Ravader. Let me explain our process to you. I'm going to read some information into the record. Then we're going to conduct a parole interview with you. At the appropriate time, those persons who wish to have input will be allowed to speak. Uh, speaking on your behalf today will be Major Williams uh, and Deputy Page. Uh, in opposition will be Mr. Randy Meyer of the uh, Jefferson Parish uh, District Attorney's Office. After we had an opportunity to have our hearing, you'll be allowed to make a statement to the board, anything you'd like to tell us before we vote, and then we'll vote. You understand our procedure? Yes, sir, I do. This is the matter of Lamar Revader. DOC number 426672, date of birth, September the 15th of 1971. He has a parole eligibility date of March the 23rd of 2017. Adjusted good time date of June 29th of 2027. Full term date of June 23rd of 2028. He is currently serving a 15 year sentence on the charges of distribution of marijuana violation of the uh, controlled dangerous substance uh, laws and distribution of cocaine, having been adjudicated a habitual offender. From September the 26th of 2013 is when he was sentenced on those charges. Is that basically correct, Mr. Levader? Yes, sir, it is. Mr. Levader, your case has been assigned to Mr. Alvin Roche. Would you please answer any questions he might have? Yes, sir, I will. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Ms. Rivera. How are you? I'm fine, sir. How are you, how are you doing yourself? I'm good. Thank you for asking. Yes, sir. Mr. Rivera, you are currently 51 years old. Am I correct? Yes, sir. I am. And you can be convicted of four felonies since you're 18 years old. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I am. And you've served right at 10 years of a 15 year sentence. So you served two thirds of your sentence. Am I, is that correct? Yes, sir, it is. So tell me, and I, I, I'm going directly to the source of your problem. Tell me most of your arrests were drug related. So tell me, are you drug addict? Yes, sir, I was. When did you start first using drugs? Uh, when I was six years old, I started drinking alcohol. I started using drugs when I was 13. Okay. So when you were six years old, and you said six. Yes, sir. You started drinking alcohol. Yes, sir. On a regular basis? Uh, no, sir. It was a it was a taste. I drank every once in a while. My father would let me have. My mother wouldn't. But my father let me consume alcohol every once in a while, and I developed a taste for it when I was young. Okay, and you started using drugs at the age of thirteen. Yes, sir. Marijuana. And what did you graduate to? I graduated to uh, powder cocaine when I was sixteen. Okay. Did you ever become a full-blown alcoholic? Yes, sir, I did. When I actually started using the cocaine on a regular basis out of control, I started drinking the uh, alcohol to come down from the effects of it. So basically your father introduced you to alcohol. Yes, sir, he did. My father was an alcoholic and a drug addict also. He's dead now, but he was also. So tell me, the extent in which you treated your alcoholism and your drug addiction? Well, th throughout my life, sir, uh, I've been to recovery and worked the 12 steps and had support groups and uh, got a lot of feedback from all those people that was in the groups with me to find out how to better myself, dealing with people, places, and things, decision-making, think, thinking, thinking, and while I've been incarcerated, that's what I've been doing. I've been working on me mostly for these 10 years. So I, I can't control outside sources, but I've been staying away from 
the individuals that decide to indulge in those type of activities, doing the certain things that I used to do. I've been mostly just product, being productive, bettering myself. And uh, I've just been accomplishing and learning and learning and accomplishing, applying myself to positive environments. And that's what I'm in right now as a trustee cooking. So I stay away from those, those thinking and those activities. It's easy to stay away when you're incarcerated. Yes, sir. It is. You've been working on this problem all your life. And 10 years ago, you were selling crack cocaine near a church. You have a problem, uh, Mr. Rivera. Your out time is fairly close, and you need some serious help with your drug problem and your alcohol problem. Are you willing to undertake a program that will help you in controlling your urges for alcohol and drugs? Yes, sir, I definitely am. I've also taken programs while I'm here, but I'm definitely willing to continue. I'm going to propose that you attend the nine month Steve Paul Intensive Substance Abuse Program, the best program that the state of Louisiana has to offer to persons addicted to uh, alcohol and illegal drugs. Yes, sir. Okay. And you must go into this program with a willingness to learn, to cooperate, sit on the first row, and take in all the information. This will assist you when you release and help you to give you the ammunition you need to control your urges for drugs. Yes, sir. And when you are released, you're going to get a set of recommendations. And you are to follow those recommendations to a T. Yes, sir. All I need to know right now, are you willing? Yes, sir, I am. I am willing. Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, now we'll hear from uh, your supporters. Uh, is Major Williams now? Good afternoon. Good morning, Major. How's it going? Um, Major Williams have to step out to a meeting real fast. I am Deputy Ajahn Page. I'm the okay. education counselor here with the reentry program. Um, on behalf of Major Williams and the rest of the team with the reentry program, I'm representing all of them. Okay. Tell us what you'd like us to know about Mr. Rivera. I can tell you from the day that. I've encountered Mr. Rivader from the beginning, um, a few years ago to now. Mr. Rivader has made tremendous strides. Um, he is now, he is, what, you have a couple months left and he will be and obtained his associate's degree from Ashland University. Um, he has been a model citizen, uh, no trouble at all. He's actually in, uh, Dr. Robertson's New Direction program, which is one of our substance abuse programs. He's in that as well. He's also taken um, one of our pre-release programs as well. So he has gone strides and he's done strides and strides and strides to better himself um, and to prepare himself to get out and become an even more productive citizen. Um, he's been working uh, since he's been in there as well, working in the kitchen. Um, and he's one of the top guys in the kitchen. He's very, very reliable, uh, willing to work on his days off. <laughs> he, he, he is, and, and like I say, he's a phenomenal student, a phenomenal citizen. Um, I think that Mr. Rivera will do strides. He will, will make strides when he's released uh, from here. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Page. We appreciate your comments. No problem. Now we hear from the opposition. Oh, 
Oh, sorry. One other thing, I do have a list of classes that he has completed since he's been in. Here. Um, like I said, the hundred hour program. He's done face based face um faith based programs. Also, like I mentioned, he did cage your rage, which is our anger management and our substance abuse. Good. Thank you again, sir. You're welcome. Now we hear from the opposition, Mr. Randy Meyer. Randy Meyer, Assistant DA Jefferson Parish. Um, my notes on this case was that uh, that he needed some substance abuse treatment before he gets out. Um, I, I think the recommendation that Mr. Um, Roche has suggested would, would be good for Mr. Rivera. Um, I'm happy with the report from the, from the staff there. Um, that, that sounds good. But, uh, I, and I think one comment that Mr. Rivera made um, suggests that, that he, he does need that substance abuse treatment. You know, he said he was an addict. Well, as we all know, he is an addict. And he needs to understand that and learn what he needs to do in order to to, to stay drug and alcohol free when he does get out of it. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Uh, Mr. Uh, Rivera, is there anything you'd like to say to the board before we vote? Uh, I'm just going to continue to work on myself. I mean, I have a family that's out there. They've been waiting on me to come out there and, and be a support to them also. And uh, I thank you all for the opportunity to uh, get myself together and go back out and do right this time because I know I was the one that made all the wrong decisions that got me in here and I blame nobody for that. But I'm trying to make the right decision to go out there better and do right. So I thank you all for the opportunity. To Thank you, Mr. Rivera. Thank you for your comments. Uh, panel ready to vote? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Roche. Mr. Rivera, I enjoyed talking with you this, this afternoon. My recommendation and vote is to grant you conditionally. That condition is the completion of the nine month Steve Hall intensive substance abuse program. After release, you are to follow all recommendations of the Steve Hall program. Attend NAAA at least three times a week. Have a random drug screen. And I want you to do some community service four hours a month. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Mr. Freeman. Oh, I concur totally with Mr. Roche. I think you're definitely on the right track. I think this nine months treatment is going to put the icing on the cake and hopefully we'll never see you again. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good luck to you. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Uh, Mr. Rivader, it sounds like you're doing very well. Excellent comments from Deputy Page. Uh, I think this treatment, uh, as Mr. Uh, Roche and Mr. Freeman both have said, uh, is exactly what you need. Hopefully, uh, it will give you the boost uh, that will keep you out of prison for the rest of your life. So, good luck to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. And uh, at the Plaquemines Parish Detention Center, I want to thank the staff for all their help there. Thank you. Good. Okay. That was heartwarming. You know, we see so many different cases where people get sent to Steve Hoyle. And in this, this one was, sticks out of my, in my mind. He just seems to, it meant so much to him that people were talking positively about him and having hope and, and belief in him and he like really appreciated it. he broke down to to be given the opportunity to go to steve oil and you just feel good about it you just feel like he's going to do really well he's going to get he's going to sit at the front row and get the most out of it as miss wise says To think that at six years old, he was being fed alcohol by his father. That's just, you know, some people just don't, aren't given a chance.
it's uh you know to think what his life must have been like to just miss out on the childhood six years old hey i think this is like one of those scenarios where it just all came together in a in a and i think a beautiful way you know the assistant da randy meyer who's there for all the cases he was just you know it's hey i agree with the game plan let's do it and uh was it the lieutenant or i don't know remember his rank but he was speaking very highly on behalf of him and all the parole board members it was just great it's just like the system, you know, doing what it's designed to do. They're not just saying, well, you got to spend more time. You're going to be locked up. It's like, actually, it, it feels like this is a good story. And um, I also want to want to touch on, I was thinking about the first case. Uh, man, given just a four year sentence for um, when he's 27 and she's 16, and I feel like I was way too late on him. I was thinking about him, like, that's disgusting. She's a child, 27 year old, you're, you're a man, you're an adult. You have all these experiences. To do that to a child and like a relative in some way, it's just the idea that he only got a four year sentence and he can be out so soon and also, that the judge, if you if you recall, they're going through who's opposed, and then you see the judge had no comment, and it's like, why would the judge have no comment? You already only gave him a four year sentence. You don't have a comment to say that he should serve the full sentence. Nine months into your four year sentence, so. You know, you got to suffer the consequences for doing something like that. Um, we can do one more. You want to do one more? We can do one more. Let me know if the comment section if you like it to be about one hour or if you think it should be a little bit more than one hour. I feel like I feel like uh, you know I don't know I actually don't know what you prefer for these premieres. So let me know. But let's jump into it. The committee on parole is called back to order. The time is 1218. Our panel today is Mr. Alvin Roche, Mr. Pete Freeman. My name is Tony Marabell. I'll be acting as chair. Our remote location is at the Southwest uh, Work Release Program. Uh, is there anyone, is the staff there with you, sir? Yes, yes, sir. Would you ask them please to introduce themselves? <laughs> Sergeant Cooley. Thank you, Sergeant. Our case is uh, Mr. William J. McGee. Mr. McGee, would you give us your full name and DOC number? William Jason McGee, 438-544. Thank you, Mr. McGee. Mr. McGee, let me explain our process to you. I'm going to read some information into the record, and then we're going to conduct a parole interview with you. At the appropriate time, we'll allow those persons who wish to have input to speak. Uh, presently, uh, today, on your behalf, will be your sister, Stacy Haley. And uh, your brother, Andy McGee, is present, but will not be speaking. Uh, after we have the hearing, you'll have an opportunity to address the board, tell us anything that you'd like to tell us, and then we vote. You understand our process? Yes, sir. Uh, this is the matter of William J. McGee, 438544, date of birth, November the 20th of 1975. He is a fourth class felony offender. He has an adjusted good time date of December the 9th of 2024, parole eligibility date of December the 5th of 2023, full term date of December the 5th of 2038, currently serving a 20 year sentence on the charges of 
possession of methamphetamines, distribution of methamphetamines, uh, and possession of methamphetamines, uh, having been sentenced on 12-19 of 2018 and August the 23rd of 2019. Is all of that information basically correct, Mr. McGee? Uh, I want to say the the uh, the possession charge got dropped when I took the two two tens on the distribution. All right. Okay. You're yeah. talking about the uh, possession of methamphetamine charges. Yes, sir. They they dropped all that if I took twenty on the two tens run consecutive on the distribution. Well, your total sentence is twenty years. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's true. Your case has been assigned to Mr. Alvin Roche. Would you please answer Mr. Roche's questions, please? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Mrs. McGee. Good afternoon, Mrs. McGee. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good, oh, good afternoon to you too. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. My... Good. Mrs. McGee, my record showed that on February 5th, of 2019, you are convicted of possession of meth, received a 10 year sentence, and that sentence was originally uh, sentenced in 2015. Is that correct? That, that's, that's correct. Yes, sir. I got two, the, the two different charges. I know, but one you were originally sentenced November 3rd, 2015. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Then you were revoked for technical, multiple technical violations in 2019. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Then you have another conviction for possession of meth. Okay, it was on the same day. Okay, good. All right. I see where you, I see where you go. Okay. Yes, sir. It was, it was the same old place. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Mr. McGee, you're 47 years old. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And you you've been convicted of four felons. Yes, sir. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And you served about four and a half years on a 20 year sentence, is that correct? Yes, sir. So you really had served 25% of your sentence yet? Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. But I see where you've earned 360 days of good time. Tell me about the program you've completed. Um, well, I, you know, I, I, different places, like at, at Concordia, Miss Book was over there. And, sir, um, sir, sir. Tell me the programs you completed. Uh, anger management. Uh, um, uh, re have you, re have you taken substance abuse? Yes, yes, sir. So tell me what substance abuse program. What class did you take? I'm trying to think where I took it at. Sorry. Did you tell which one did you take? It uh, Mr. McGee. Yes, sir. Take a deep breath. You're nervous. I really, I, 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 I am. That's all right. Take a deep breath. You only having a conversation. And then think about exactly you had 360 days of good time. So I'm going to help you a little bit, okay? Right. Uh, you've taken anger management. You've taken 100 hours free release. You went to the Blue Walters program in 2016. And uh, you've taken Louisiana Risk Management one yes, and two. Yes, sir. 
there any other program? Uh, I par parenting. I took it. Yeah. I, I took it. I took it. It was the last one I've, I've taken was parenting. Okay. And I see where you're taking the fourth phase of living in balance. Yes, sir. I did. I took it. What you think? Oh, okay. uh, and oh, uh, oh. Uh, you did. You did. Risk. You didn't complete living in balance. Why? I got shipped. Okay. I had I had I had one class left and I got shipped from DC two to Catahoula. Okay. So tell me why are you incarcerated right now? Tell me the reason why you're incarcerated. For oh selling drugs. You're a drug dealer. I was at one time, yes sir. Tell me how long were you in the drug dealing business? Uh, probably two, just a couple, not very long. But, 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 Mr. McGee, this is the day to be honest. I am. I, I wasn't in it very long. They got me. <laughs> You've been convicted of four felonies. Tell me what the four felonies were. Oh, uh, DWI? Yes. DWI? Yes. Distribution? And distribution. And you had two or three other D DWI arrests? Right. Yes, sir. So did you ever consume any of your products when you were selling drugs? Not very, yeah, I, yes, sir, I did. I, I did. I'm not going to lie to you. I did. Okay, so when did you start using drugs? Oh, uh, at about night when I was 19. So you didn't use any drugs, didn't smoke any marijuana before you were 19 years old? No, sir. How long did you use drugs? Uh, off and on to about uh, 2018. Okay, so what was your drug of choice? Meth amphetamine. Meth? Yes, sir. Now, the most difficult drug to break the habit from? Yes, sir. Definitely. <laughs> Did you ever abuse alcohol? I, I I haven't drank a drop of alcohol since 2001. So why all the DWI? They were it was all back to back in a short period of, of time. I I just I, I went on a, a binge and I that happened real fast. Okay. What was your okay. what was your uh, what was your uh, alcohol of choice? Oh, uh, beer. Okay. So you got your first DWI in 1995. Yes, sir. And then you got one in 1997, another one in 1997, and then in 202, five years later, another yes, DWI. So I'm counting almost 10 years where you were arrested for DWI. Yes, sir. It was the, the, the second and third one was back to back, I want to oh, say. So, so tell me what you, you went, you went to Blue Walters. Yes, sir. And it didn't do you any good. Am yes, I sir. right? Yes, sir. But you, I, came, you came back and you had arrest for drug paraphernalia, possession of meth after Blue Walters. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Possession of Schedule 2, drug paraphernalia in 2018. Okay. So, okay. You have a, do you have a problem? Yes, sir. I... What's your problem? Myself. You're a drug addict. 
You're yes, drug addict. Yes, sir. Drug addict. What, what are you going to do about it? Well, I've, I've, through this, this time I've been down right now, I've, I've, the classes I have taken, I've, they, I've got, I've, to, I've listened and, and listened to the, the teachers talking to me that knew, like, you know, like, uh, risk, risk, risk factors, you know, like uh, justify and blame. At a long time, I would justify whatever I was doing, make it sound good, you know, and, and blame everybody out here. When the whole time it was right here, it was me. It was nobody but me. You're talking about Louisiana Risk Management Model 1 and 2. Yes, sir. Now, according to the Catahoula Parish Sheriff's Office, you have an outstanding warrant and detainer for your arrest for felony stalking. So tell me about that. I, I, at when when was it issued? Because I I knew nothing about it. It was I issued was when I was sir, married. Sir, sir, you asked me a question. Let me answer. Okay, I'm sorry. Just relax. It was issued in June of 2018, and it's still active. All right, well. That and, was, the charge, um, and the charges are still pending in court in Catalonia Parish. I was married to a woman from down there. And at the time, I, I was at, she had she'd put a, a restraint or whatever on me, okay? Well, I went to jail. <laughs> and the next day, she come to the courthouse and visited me. And the uh, bubble, his name, Bubba. Uh, anyway, he that one of the investigators, he seen her come visit me and he and he he, he supposed to took care of that really. Okay, now are we talking about Liz McGee? Yeah, yes, yes, sir. Exactly. And Liz McGee has sent in a statement opposing your early release, and she gave me permission to tell you. What this statement was all about. She states that she is opposed. She also states that she is divorced from you, but she's continued to try to contact her and making threats. You call from the prison. She's tried to block your calls. Would you continue to try to speak with her? What sir, do you have to say about that? Sir, I haven't talked to her in years. Yeah. But she, that's how have she- you attempted, Have you attempted to call her? No, sir. That's how, that's how she is. She, she's a drama queen and she, you know, she won't leave nothing alone. I, I haven't talked to her in a very, very long time. And you've not attempted to call her from the facility that you're housing. No, sir, I haven't. Okay. But, sir, that's how, that's how she is. Okay, okay. No. While we are in opposition, I need to tell you that you have opposition from the DA's office. Uh, Reed Walters, you have opposition from the sheriff's office. In the South Parish, and that's that's about all the opposition. Now, Mr. McGee, we both agree that you have a problem. Am I right? Yes, sir. I'm, they have a on Wednesday nights, and Gina, they have a a celebrate recovery meeting, and I I want to make that a priority. Okay, now, Mr. McGee, I, I'm calling the shots here, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You need help, and you need the help before you release so you'll have the ammunition to fight your addiction once you release. Yeah. I'm going to propose to the panel this afternoon that you complete 
the nine month Steve Paul Intensive Substance Abuse Program at Bossier Media. That's the best program that the state of Louisiana has to offer. Are you willing to attend that program? And, and by the way, you're shaking your head. You're saying, no, I'm not willing to get the help that I need. I would, I would, my, my, I would be home before the nine, that nine months is up. You'll be home before that nine months up. And how are you going to do that? Ain't got, can't, ain't got, ain't got much longer than that. I've, I've, your, your good time date, your good time date the 24. is 24, 18 months away. 18 months from now. And you're going to tell me completing a nine month substance abuse program, the best program the state of Louisiana has to offer, and you'll be home before the nine months. I, I, what if I take it? If I, if I take it as soon as it's over, will I get released? You can put that on the table. Okay. Like okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I am complete. Uh, the interview is complete. Yeah, thank you. Now we hear from Miss uh, Stacy Haley, your sister. Miss Haley, can you hear us? You're on mute. Yes, sir. Okay. Tell us what you'd like us to know about your brother. Well, um, he's hard to understand. I know he's one track mind. Um, he's hard to get to understand. Um, as you can very well see and hear. <clears throat> and I know he's determined and he wants to come home. I, I hope and I wish for him he will take the course for the nine months to help him. Um, after that time, you can see what's happening then. And I'm here to help him in any way I can. And I... I want him to be able to come home and have a good life. Ms. Haley, thank you very much. Uh, I, 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 I see how much you care for him and I see how frustrating it is for you to want him to get help and he doesn't need to get help. Problem. He's lucky to have you in his life. So thank you very much for talking. Mr. McGee, is there anything you'd like to say to the board before the board votes? Thank you. Uh, Jason clearly needs, he needs structure. He needs consistent structure and guidance from, um, from his organic brain injury to just his sir, cognitive. Sir, yes, sorry. Sir. Would you, you tell us who you are? I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't have you on the list, but just give us your name. And tell us who you are. Uh, uh, my name's Andy McGee. I'm his half brother. Okay. I do have you on the list, but I didn't think you were speaking. Go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. And I don't have to speak. I, I was there just to answer any medical questions related to his trauma, traumatic brain injury. I, I'm I'm a physician. I'm his half brother. But uh, anyway, he obviously needs substantial structure, and he would benefit from anything that obviously you and the organization would offer him. And I would highly suggest that he accept all the gracious therapy that can be given to him. Thank you. Could you, could you elaborate a little bit on his organic brain injuries? Yes, sir. Uh, it, it Hopefully it's in his file. I had sent a uh, document kind of describing it. He had a pretty substantial uh, three-wheeler accident when he was uh, a preteen. He actually resulted in a major splenic injury. He had to be shipped to Oshner Medical Center. He's got uh, substantial uh, encephalomalacia on his CAT scan. Uh, in addition to whatever his cognitive baseline is. So he has, uh, he, he essentially has 
probably um, inherit inherit uh, cognitive abilities of a certain level, but uh, exacerbated by traumatic brain injury. It should uh, hopefully that's listed in his medical record. Thank you, uh, Doctor. It's, it's helpful for us to hear it firsthand, though. So thank you very much. Thank Mr. you. McGee, Mr. McGee, is there anything you'd like to say to us before we vote? Oh, I, 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 pre, I, I appreciate y'all giving me a, a, a chance to come home early. I'm, I, I just want to do what I got to do to get with my, fam, my family as soon as I can. Thank you, Mr. McGee. We appreciate your comments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. McGee, based upon an extensive criminal background, your full felony offender, opposition from law enforcement, DA's office, an active retainer, a history of drug and alcohol, my vote is to deny your request. Mr. Freeman? Uh, I concur with Mr. Roje, plus the fact that he does, he's not willing to take the treatment uh, and he has all of those DWIs. Uh, uh, I just think he's a public safety risk. Can I, can I take it? So we voted. Can, can I take the treatment? Mr. McGee, uh, you have two votes to. Uh, deny your parole, uh, I would suggest strongly that you try to get in whatever programs are available for you there. Uh, we will recommend that you try to get in them. If you want to get in them, that's up to you. Uh, your parole has been denied today. Good luck to you. We will be uh, adjourned at Southwest uh, Work Release Program. Would have that's his problem. His brother, yeah, his brother explained it. Could, uh, could you mute us? You know, that, that hearing felt like a little bit of a roller coaster for me. It was, uh, only in Louisiana parole, parole boards, right? It's, it's just, uh, it just, at a right field, you don't expect, you don't expect that his half brother comes on and he's a doctor and he brings out this bombshell fact that he was in a, an accident that damaged his frontal lobe. I mean, that, and he doesn't really, well, you see the results of, of it, what, what it's caused. I mean, he, he wasn't making any sense. He literally told Mr. O'Shea, I'm going to, I'm going to be home anyways. Why do I need to take the program? And Mr. O'Shea is like, it's 18 months, buddy. You could be out in nine months or 18 months and we're just like thinking how, how what is wrong with this guy you know forget like the him being nervous it just it, it, it you know it, it just kept building up to the point where it's what's wrong with this guy and then his uh his half brother comes on they're confused because they, they didn't have him listed as a speaker and his half brother almost didn't even share the fact about his brain until Mr. Mirabella, you know, poked us. Well, tell us, tell us what you mean. And I thought when they told him that they were going to take a different approach. Now, when he initially was pushing back on, on Steve Hoyle program and then start, you know, Mr. Freeman, Mr. Mir 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 okay, it's done. We're done. I was like, yep, he's done. He's not getting in. They, you know, they don't need to convince you to go to Steve Hoyle. They don't need to convince you to save nine months off of your sentence, cut your sentence in half. 
And I was like, he's done for. He's uh, He just dug himself in a hole that he's not going to climb out of. But when his brother spoke, I thought maybe, just maybe, they'll, they'll have some leniency on him, some mercy, some understanding, some type of empathy. I mean, he's... He has the, he, he kind of, you know, it was the impression that we were dealing with a child. But they, they still said no. And I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, he's... I mean, he couldn't even do the simple math, right? He couldn't do the simple understanding. But do you still put him through a program if he's going to go into it still acting like a child? Because he's going into it to do it just to get the time off. He doesn't, he's not going to go into it and be mature about it. So maybe for that reason, you don't put him in there. You, you put, you want to put people in there that want to be in there. And, and, and it's, you know, I'm glad we did this hearing afterwards because on contrast to the hearing that we had just before where he was so grateful to be given the opportunity. And, and here you have just the two sides of the coin. It's fascinating to me. It's, it's, it's just absolutely fascinating. And to think, talk about, you know, and maybe it's not just a gene pool thing, getting half of the half of, I don't know which half the doctor got, right? But it could come down just to that four wheeler accident. I mean, it's, that's, you, you damage your frontal lobe and that's it. It was interesting when he came up as a dealer, I was like, hey, he's a dealer. I just couldn't see it. I can't picture him being a dealer. And I, I thought it was very touching what Mr. Mirabella said to his sister. He was uh, in tune to what she was saying. He doesn't say that to everyone who speaks on behalf of their siblings. He seemed to identify that his sister really did care and uh that was nice that what mr mirabella said you know I, I give i give these board members sometimes a hard time and how mr mirabella takes you know it's like you can have conversations with different parolees who they've done the most heinous crimes and you're just like you know you're sick from hearing about it and then it's like well have you ever smoked marijuana and it's like what that's where your question goes like who cares um but to be able to do this for all these years and still show an uh, empathy and attention and focus to care the way that he did right here that's special i think um I do get the, the idea that they need to keep him off the roads with those DUIs. I mean, I guess he had two felonies and he was arrested two other times. That's just dangerous. With his maturity level, it's just dangerous. But again, the, you put him in the program and just hope, hope, hope that he makes something out of it. I hear then on the on the other side, no, you just let him do work. Like, don't give him any type of benefit because of his maturity level. But then again, maybe he should be, I don't know. He's in work release. He's at least earning money. But I don't know what the answer is, what you do in this situation. It's just, it's, a, but with that, I'll let you go. Um, please do the whole algo thing. And I'll see you, uh, I'll see you later.